Ladies and gentlemen, what's crack a locking? How y'all doing? And welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best beta Modern Warfare 2 controller settings. Oh, yeah, baby. So, if anytime you guys enjoy this video, you know what to do smash that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, you're going to want to subscribe. So, hit that subscribe button with the bell notifications. With all that being said, let's get into this video. Come on, baby. Let's go. All right, you guys, let's get into these controller settings. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and hit our options button here. We're going to go over to settings, go down into controller. Now we're going to talk about the controller settings here first, and then we'll jump into the advanced. So first things first here is input device. Aiming input device obviously is the controller. Our button layout preset. Now I suggest you guys go ahead and stick uh, with the stick and move a flipped. Uh, this is just my preference. Again, it's totally up to you guys whether you want to have it standard. Uh, if you got back buttons, I'm not too sure. I myself I do have back buttons. So if I have it on stick and move a flipped, uh, my uh, right analog stick, if I push it in, it's going to jump and mantle. So I have that set to that. My melee is X. And uh, obviously, I have it flipped here as well. I think flipping it is a lot better. That way there you have less of a pull to aim and shoot. So you get better uh, response time, I, I would say anyways, because you're using your top bumpers instead of your triggers. So I would go ahead and set that to on for your stick layout preset. Have it at default uh, controller vibration. I think it messes things up a little bit. So I prefer to have it off. But again, it's totally up to you guys whether you want to have it on or off. Uh, horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity. Now, I suggest you guys have these set anywhere between a five and a seven. Uh, maybe even an eight if you guys want, but usually like most pro players, they have it set between a five and a seven. I got mine here set at a five. I'm probably going to go up to about a six here as I've been playing a little bit. So I think I'm going to move mine up to a six as we speak. And then for our ADS sensitivity multiplier, what this is. So when you're ADSing with a scope or like uh, anything under a one times and lower. So like just your regular uh sighting or just the uh actual iron sights this is going to stop you from moving so quickly so if you guys are having trouble if you're not staying on point like if you're not staying on the target while you're adsing uh, just turn this down a little bit it'll definitely help you guys out i suggest maybe starting it's going to start off at a 1.0 i suggest starting this off at like a 0.7 maybe uh, i'm actually going to keep mine at a 6.6 and then a 0.7 i think this would be perfect for me that way there, I'm staying on point when I'm aiming at my target. Uh, if you guys want to turn it up, go ahead and do so. Totally up to you guys. As you guys are playing, you may want to turn things up a little bit more. Uh, sensitivity multiplier. This is for like your uh, third person, ground vehicles, air vehicles, and your tablet. I mean, I would keep all these uh, just regular at 1.0. That's totally fine. Uh, vertical aim axis. I mean, that there as well, you guys. This is like... Uh, it, this is i would stay i would keep this all at standard guys i wouldn't even worry about it just keep those as standard aim down sight behavior obviously at a hold uh automatic sprint now i suggest you guys try this out go ahead and have your automatic tactical sprint on it's definitely going to save the life on your controller for a sure so i mean all you got to do is push forward you don't have to be pushing in on your stick or anything you just push forward and your character is automatically going to sprint so I would suggest uh, trying that out. You know, if you guys don't like it, you can always switch it. Uh, equipment behavior here is obviously set to hold. So you can hold your Semtex and then throw it whenever you would like. Uh, weapon amount activation, ADS and melee. Obviously, that's what we're used to. Uh, interact reload behavior. Now, it's going to be set to a prioritize a reload. But I like to have mine on prioritize to interact. That way there, we're just clicking on a button, you know. We're closing the door behind us with one click or we're picking up ammo with the one click. Uh, also, it's just it's a tap to reload as well, you guys. But it's just going to prioritize. Like, let's say you got an ammo cache in front of you and you're trying to reload at the same time. It's actually going to pick up the ammo first and then reload if you guys know what I mean. So prioritize interact. That's what I like to have on uh, armor plates here. I mean, it's probably we're not even going to be using armor plates, but I would go ahead and have that at apply all. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the controller. Let's get into the advanced side of things here. Let's get it, baby. All right, so getting into the advanced side of things here, target aim assist, you're definitely going to want to have this on. 
uh, the, the camera slows down when the crosshairs is about to move over an enemy. So obviously have that on. Uh, aim assist type here. You can have this set to default. I prefer mine on default here. Uh, if you guys are newer players to, or if you're newer to like a controller playing, I would definitely go ahead and switch this to focusing. Focusing strong aim slowdown that also kicks in uh, when near uh, narrowly missing a target. Best for players new to analog aiming, but I just suggest here because we're probably not new in controllers here. This is why we're in a controller setting on the Xbox and the PlayStation, obviously. So just keep that set to default. Aim response curve type. Now you guys can either have this as standard or dynamic. Uh, I'm actually going to switch mine here to a dynamic. I'm going to try it out. That way there you have like a, a reverse S curve, a mapping for fine aim rate control. So it's kind of like less movement of the stick, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to try this on dynamic for a little bit, but usually I have it just set on standard. Uh, ADS a multiplier right here, focusing. I just have that at a one. You guys could keep it there like that. Uh, ADS sensitivity transition timing. I got it timed as instant. So as soon as we uh, like, as soon as we ADS, it's instant. As soon as we let go, it's instant. There's no like gradual from ADSing to uh, back to holding your weapon, if you know what I mean. Uh, custom sensitivity per zoom. Now I got that set to off. If you guys are into like quick scoping and stuff, you could go ahead here and like quit. Um, you could switch it so that it's it's a lot quicker if you're quick scoping or things like that. Uh, you could go ahead and set it like the multiplier for the high zoom uh, scopes and stuff like that. It's it's pretty interesting to get into, but uh, I, I don't know if too many of us are actually quick scopers and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep that set to off. Uh oh, what do we do here? We're going to have that set to off here. Our input dead zones is this is I'm going to have my left stick at a min and my right stick min at a zero now because my controller is fairly new so if you guys got any stick drift so like if your character is moving on its own without moving anything you guys are going to want to go ahead and turn this up or if your weapon's moving on its own again go ahead and turn the right stick min up a little bit till it stops uh your left stick uh max and your right stick max you're going to want to have these at about 90 to a 95 even a 99 would be good as well um if you guys decrease this, it's going to be less of a of a movement of your stick. So if you're like, uh, let's just say if you move just a slight little bit to the left on your left stick, I mean, it's going to go really quick, if you know what I'm saying. So I would just have those set at a 0.95. That's, that'd probably be perfect. Our L2 button dead zone is at a 0.13. R2 button dead zone at a 0.13. That's kind of just like a fail safe in case we accidentally hit our triggers. Uh, it's not going to trigger anything off like we're not going to throw a semtex by accident or something like that so have those stay out of 13 you'll be good uh sprint tactical sprint behavior i got that at a toggle auto move forward is off because we don't want to be moving forward on its own our tactical sprint behavior is double tap our grounded mantle now i would go ahead and have this set to off that way there we could just jump over walls and stuff while we're on the ground it's not going to mantle us up and we're not going to be hanging off the wall and then have to hit our button again to actually mantle over the wall it's going to have it set so that we could just jump right over the wall or jump on top of the wall if you guys know what i'm saying it's going to be a lot easier trust me on this one uh automatic airborne mantle i have that set at a partial automatic ground mantle is off we got our invert a slide and a dive behavior have that at a standard our plunging underwater is set to movement our parachute auto deploy this is not really going to matter because we don't have no war zone right now but uh, usually you guys would have that set on off. That way there you can reach the ground as quick as everybody else or quicker, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, sprinting door bash, have that set to on. So we just have to sprint towards the door and it's just going to pop it right open and scare the crap out of whoever's hiding behind it. So have that set to on. Uh, combat behaviors here. So our ADS stick swap, have that added off. Our ADS interruption behavior interrupted. Yes, that's what we want uh weapon amount movement exit have that on on we want our weapon mount exit delay to short so when we're mounted as soon as we unmount it's just going to do it instantly our depleted ammo weapon switch i suggest having this on that way there if you do run out of ammo with your your primary weapon it's automatically going to switch to your secondary which is really good to have on our quick c4 detonation i have this set on on that way there we can shoot our c4 and just hit our trigger one more time and then boom it explodes so nice and quick right there 
uh vehicle behaviors i got this on short delay our camera our camera initial position free look overlay behaviors here uh they can all just stay what they are guys so toggle moderate and moderate just keep it as that and that's it for the controller settings guys for xbox and playstation i hope this guys i hope it helps you out there goes the dogs in the background so that's my cue to uh to shut her down here let me know how all these controller settings go in the comments below you guys don't forget to smash that like button to keep my algorithm real subscribe to that bell notification on so you don't miss any of my awesome excellent videos get in the game switch your settings have some fun until next time i'm the puff man peace out